too much forehead. Hey guys, uh, sorry it's not the prettiest video and it's not the best camera and not great lighting. But anyway, I really wanted to do a video intro to show that I'm going to be painting this in the video while you hear me talk about why we don't change. Yeah, I hope you like it. And yeah, sorry, but I really wanted to export this video tonight, so alas. Hey guys, wow, can't believe it, second video, it's happening. And just thank you so much for all the welcoming responses in my last video. I honestly did not expect this many people to remember me. Uh, what are you guys doing with your lives? Just kidding. <laughs> so it was really fun to read the comments and respond to a lot of you guys. Uh, and it's just really cool to see a discussion on this comment wall rather than just like, oh, what a great video or, or you suck. <laughs> Uh, but I kind of want to get into this topic of why we don't change because a lot of the things that I saw on the comments is like, oh man, this is really motivating. I'm definitely going to change, which <laughs> we've said that to ourselves before, haven't we? Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. Um, but you know it, you know, I know it. The amount of times that like if I could get a penny for every single time I'm like, just, just one more episode, I'll be serious tomorrow, you know, just, and then like four more episodes, it's still like one more episode. I would seriously be filthy rich. I'm not even joking how many times I'm like, I'll be serious tomorrow. Um, the other thing I saw was like, yeah, that's great, but you know, easier said than done. And seriously, definitely, I agree with you. Like, why is it so hard? Why can't we just sustainably think positive, right? Like, why can't we keep it up? Well, I'm gonna answer it for you now, for you bitches who leave my video at like three minutes. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking to you, okay? Just kidding, I love you too. Thanks for watching anyway. <laughs> anyway, so the answer pretty much is you aren't changing your thoughts because you don't believe your new thoughts. In future videos, we'll talk more about how and the steps to take, but the first step really is to understand why things are the way they are and essentially it's because you don't believe your new thoughts okay so let's break it down for those of you who want to leave it's three minutes or something bye bye um but for everyone else let's talk about beliefs okay so i did some really intensive research by googling the definition <clears throat> a belief is an acceptance that something is true especially if there is no evidence so even if there's evidence right? Your brain is like, hmm, nah. <laughs> and we start forming beliefs when we're kids, right? Like we inherit it from our parents, we get some from our community and from our experiences. Uh, but beliefs can form at any time. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not like it only happens when you're a kid. So like today, your cat might shit on your cute ass succulent collection and you'll form a belief that is a shitty cat. And like, you're like, Mm, yes, I've accepted it to be true. That cat is indeed shitty. It is a fact. But the ones we've kept since childhood, I think can be harder to break because we believed it for so much longer. So we're really good at believing it. So if your cat shat on your succulents when you were seven, you'll get really good at continuous believing that it's a shitty cat. You look for evidence of it all the time, which by the way, this is called confirmation bias. We can talk about that later in the future. But anyway, you're looking for evidence to prove your belief. So that cat could kill all the spiders in your house. It could have lavender scented piss. It could cook you a three course meal and you'll be like, I hate quinoa, shitty cat. You know, no matter what, you're just like, you're looking to prove your current beliefs and you're getting better and better at it as you get older. Cause you're just, that's what you're practicing. And I think if we evolve this way to survive because we're vulnerable at a young age, right? Like that's the highest chance of us getting eaten by a lion is back in the day is at that age at when we're younger. So it's just so much safer for us to assimilate and it's so much safer for us to like just keep the knowledge from our parents and stuff. And you know, belief systems isn't itself bad, right? Like it keeps us from getting eaten by lions. There's a ton of teachings in the Bible that's super cool, like forgiveness, peace, drinking wine at church. Like that's great. 
Unfortunately, though, we're not living in a world anymore where we're afraid of getting eaten by a lion. So some belief systems, I think, can actually hurt us. Let's take a look at Scientology, okay? And I think that's a belief system that can possibly hurt you quite a bit. So let's take a look at Scientology children. They are told over and over again that everyone else in the world is a suppressive person. Like, they're taught to hate, okay? And hate might give you a false sense of power, but really, hate sucks. Like, it doesn't actually feel good in your body. Like, if you just describe hate as a feeling, it doesn't feel good. And no one actually likes the feeling of it. So these kids in Scientology, they become adults with this belief system, and they're, like, shoulder deep in, like, hate mud swamp, you know? They're like, yep. This is great. I feel shit swimming around my legs, but this is fine. So now let's take a look at your beliefs and mine as artists and as any creator. For some reason, okay, you and I developed a shitty ass belief, maybe since you were a kid, that your work is worthless, that you're not creative, that you have nothing to say, that you're not unique, that you're not good enough, fill in the blanks, okay? And I, you know, when I tell my closest friends about like my insecurities about this stuff, they're often like, what? Why? What? And I do that too. Like if I, if I hear my a really good friend of mine who I really love and they're telling me about some of their self-loathing, I'm like, what? Why? You're awesome. How can you not see what I see? Like, you're, you're great, you know? And it's the same with those Scientology kids. Like, we're like, what the fuck? You believe your soul is an alien spirit from a galactic federation? What? So, you might wish that you would change and you would have more self-discipline, but really, you're already disciplined, but you're disciplined to your current belief system that your work sucks or that you're a failure or something. Like I'm, I'm imagining right now, trying to convince someone who's been in Scientology all their life that they have some messed up shit going on in their, in their belief system. You can give them a ton of evidence of why it's bullshit, why their organization is shady. But I just, I already feel exhausted just thinking about the effort it would take. Like it would be hard work, right? And at the end of the day, if they want to believe it and they don't want to change, they fucking won't. Like, bottom line. Even if people are physically abused right in front of them. Like, no, this is great. Everything's fine. So unfortunately, your issue and mine is kind of similar. Like, someone can give us a ton of evidence of why we're great or we try to tell ourselves that we're awesome. But if we don't believe it, it's just not going to change. This is why I think positive thinking just doesn't work sometimes and kind self-talk sometimes makes it worse because you're saying to yourself like, and I'm saying to myself like, I'm awesome. But then you're thinking, no, you're not. I'm great. No, you're not. And then that's the kind of thinking that just kind of gets embedded even further, you know? You just don't believe in the new thought. But the thing is, you don't believe in the new thought because you're just super good at believing something else that contradicts it. So it's not like something went wrong. Okay, like your brain didn't, didn't malfunction. Your brain is actually doing exactly what it should be doing. It's just choosing something else because of what you kind of developed when you were a kid. And again, that's no one's fault. No one's fault. It's okay. It's all great. It's, it's all fine. So we haven't discussed how to change your thoughts. I want to make sure that each video is very clear about what the message is. I'm just right now trying to tell you why it is hard, why it's hard to change, why you might learn something one day, but you're not immediately a new person the next day, okay? Like, it's why you haven't transformed into a butterfly. It's totally okay. Understanding yourself and understanding why things are the way they are is the first step. So if there's any key takeaway that I need you guys to take from this video is that you don't beat yourself up about it. Okay, that is so incredibly important. And what does that sound like? What does what does beating yourself yourself up sound like? It's saying things like, "What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, why can't you be better? 
you're so stupid, you suck, you know, just like all of that stuff. That's, that's no good, no good. Because that's still believing that there is something wrong with you. Like that's, that's not how you're going to help yourself. What you can do instead is you can be like, oh, my brain is just really good at choosing a shitty thought to believe. Really, it's just trying to protect me. Nothing's gone wrong. My brain's just really efficient at trying to protect me from doing something that might hurt me. Like, of course I haven't changed. It's been years and years of practice. For me, it's been 26 years of practice of believing a really crappy thought about my work. So of course I haven't changed. Practice makes perfect, right? So nothing's gone wrong. What I'm trying to show you in this video is that nothing has gone wrong with your brain. Okay, there's nothing wrong with you and your brain isn't malfunctioning, which I think will help you not beat yourself up. Because if you're saying things like, what the fuck is wrong with you? That means you haven't really truly learned that your brain's just doing its job. Your brain is just doing what it's good at, which is believing what you currently believe. It's, it's your brain's job. Okay, nothing's gone wrong. Learning that and really understanding that your brain is just doing what it's supposed to do will help you not beat yourself up. Because when, let's say, you make a mistake again and you don't change, like you read a book that is that you think was at first life-changing, but the next day you're back to old habits, you can understand and tell yourself, oh, of course I haven't changed. So the first step is just to not beat yourself up and to just have compassion for your brain. Because if, you still, because if you're still beating yourself up after you make a mistake, thinking that there is something wrong with you for not changing, that is moving backwards. If you make a mistake, don't add more mistakes to it. So if you want to change your thoughts, start with that. We'll go into more detail in the future, I hope, because I love this stuff. I love thinking and talking about this stuff. Um, but for now, it's just learning that your brain isn't messed up. It's not messed up. It's just, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, but you want it to do something else. So don't beat yourself up. Okay, cool. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed watching the video itself. I seriously never know how to end videos. I feel so fucking awkward every time. All right, I'll, I'll see you guys next week. Okay, all right, bye.